still possible to, to combine uh, different figures, obtaining uh, high, hybrid, hybrid forms that, that brings much, much more, even much, much more uh, variety into rhythmical, rhythmical uh, uh, fabric of, of my music. So now, now I'm going to show you how uh, how does it look my working sheet when I work it with the invention number four. In 1915, I composed 12 inventions for harpsichord. Were 12 uh, two voice uh, two part uh, inventions for harpsichord, and this is a working sheet how it, it was going on. So, some somewhere uh, colored uh, zooms of that text shows that there is a final combinations of uh, rhythm and uh, and pitch, uh, like like the, like that. You see, E of, uh, it is eight, and D of fourth octave. 16, it is E of fourth octave. E, uh, eight of fourth octave. 16 of D of fourth octave, and so on, and so on, and so on. This is a part of the right hand, and then would be part of the left hand. It's already in in bold in bold. This is system of old end. That's it. This is this is how it looks. It's formal uh, computer code. And now you will see the text and listen to the music of that invention. Uh, moment, moment. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, no, it is the same. It is the same.
that's it. So um, this very short and very uh, sketch-like uh, explanation of my system. Now I have a bit time to uh, answer some questions that may may arise in in the audience. Thank you very much for attention to that matter. Thank you, uh, absolutely fantastic for your absolutely fantastic lecture. Uh, it's clear that we need uh, to. Uh, Perhaps uh, to uh, attend your your books because I know that uh, Leonid Alexandrovich Grabowski now uh, uh, is uh, working for on uh, your, your books with uh, strict um, uh, description of this method of composition and uh, of course uh, who who want uh, to. To ask something, please. Uh, but I, I need just unmute uh, you. Uh -huh. Please, please, please. You, if you want to uh, ask something, Vladimir uh, Sanj Grabowski, please. No. Okay, this, I have to see the participants. Okay. Доброго вечора. Якщо можна в українською спитаю, бо мені важко англійською сформулювати буде питання. Прошу. Питання таке, коли ви застосовуєте ті чи інші алгоритми, наскільки ви можете передбачити результат, або іншими словами, наскільки той результат, звуковий результат, який видає алгоритм, відповідає вашим очікуванням. На це можу відповісти наступне. Я завдячую деякі з ідей своєї значить, музичної естетики людині, яка відійшла, по-моєму, це було минулого року. Богуслав Шефер, видатний польський композитор, теоретик, драматург, значить, візуальний артист і так далі, і так далі. Він закликав досліджувати межі, границі музики, іти далі, далі, досліджувати, що може бути музикою. Це було одна, одне з гасел його всієї діяльності. Горизонти музики, навіть так зветься одна з його книжок. І от він казав, що треба випробувати такі речі, від яких ви можете навіть трохи бути шоковані. Тобто такі, які вас, вас вразять або значить, несподіване, щось таке несподіване. От я значить, як би сказати, свідомо йшов на це. І дійсно іноді бувало таке, коли я йшов на першу репетицію концерту «Містеріозо», я трохи, звичайно, хвилювався і був абсолютно непевно, тому що я не міг точно знати, що я, що я почую, оскільки там дев'ятиголосна голосна поліфонія, і навіть, навіть при умові, що це можна було б заграти десятьма пальцями, ну, вже Токсинакіс, який пише кожен палець на окремий нотний стан, може він би зміг, я, наприклад, не зміг. Тому я просто значить, поляга, полягався на Стравінського запевнення, що композитор завжди чує, хоча б і методом розрахунку. Отак От приблизно я підходив до своїх композицій і зараз підходжу. Приблизно я уявляю, що має бути, але, звичайно, деталі, З'ясується тільки тоді, коли алгоритм видасть мені той чи інший текст. Звичайно, я можу його, я можу його міняти. От, скажімо, коли я компонував свою кантату в Тенере Мортен, фактично жодного звуку, крім того, що я одержав значить, випадковим чином, з випадкових чисел, я не міняв. Я тільки їх перегруповував по височині переносив з октави на октаву. І тільки. Тобто жодної зміни з мого боку, скажімо, ля замінити на соль, або такого, такого абсолютно не було. Так що я вірю в те, що значить, метод випадкових чисел і допущення певного, певного моменту значить, випадковості в процес творчий може дати дуже несподівані, цікаві і непередбачувані наслідки. Дякую. Хто ще має запитання? Who, who else have some questions? 
Okay. Thank you. Perhaps uh, now we can start uh, the second part of our lecture and uh, it's possible that uh, uh, Georgi Potapalski can uh, can uh, to uh, dispose a new point of view and some some uh, uh, discussion with this uh, this position of uh, uh, Leonid Rabowski. So please, uh, Georgi, uh, start with your presentation. Hello, little focus. Um, uh, okay. Uh, wait a minute. Leonid, I need to switch the, the screen. Mm -hmm. That means that I have to close. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Stop sharing. Stop sharing screen. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, sorry for my bad English. I will try my best. Uh, before I uh, I read some text in Russian and I translated in with Google, so uh, maybe I, I will just read it and we will discuss if you want. Uh, I want to start with the, the beginning to tell you uh, where I'm from and how I start to, uh, to work with sound and visual. Uh, I was born in Moscow and like many others, I started out uh, in a school band as a guitar player. Uh, we played a mixture uh, of different popular styles at that time. Uh, it was like hardcore funk alternative and uh, it was very noisy and uh, harsh music at that time and uh, that's that's why I, mm, I was uh, uh, from the beginning I was in interested in the sound like uh, Inspector is noise spectre sound. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Uh, I will try to put the video. I don't know if you see me. Okay, uh, uh, then I more and more went to the site of experiments uh, and start trying to search something new in sound. And of course, quite quickly I switched to the computer because uh, I think that I'm in such generation uh, of young people which, uh, you know, no, we was born when the computer start to be, a normal thing in uh, every place in every hall. So uh, at first um, I had some early version of Ableton Live, uh, uh, but at the same time I was digging in uh, such program like Max MSP. It was first uh, version, very hard to get into this program. And th at that time it was 2005. Uh, and it took me several years to produce at least some sound, to, to get the sound from this program. Uh, and, and when finally I did it, since 2007, I start, I completely switched to this, uh, to writing patches in, patches in this program and started a project called UGF Not Found. I've always moved uh, purely intuitively. Uh, and uh, when I started my project, I immediately um, started thinking audiovisually. It means that uh, I, mm, I, every, every time I, uh, I think about projects like interception, uh, like something cross-media, audiovisually. Uh, and uh, I thought that project will be much more complex, it has to be much more complex uh, and complete. In fact, I was engaged in data interpretation uh, and looked for uh, ways to most, um, how I can uh, express the relationship of algorithms with audio and visual content. Uh, in that time, I I did some audiovisual works. No, 
I will show you to Uh, my website and It's something uh, like this. Uh, in that time, I, I was sure that the algorithm should produce not only sound, but also a visual environment. And I worked only in, in, in this uh, system. And uh, so, Ah, and uh, at some point, uh, again, uh, I, I was pulled towards uh, more performative creativity. Uh, it means that uh, I thought that this computer system, it's not enough for me, and I would like to work with something like in Rome in real life. Uh, and that time I tried to make the project with classic music, but uh, uh, you should know that I'm not a, absolutely not a uh, classic musician, and uh, even uh, I don't have any education at all. Uh, and that was just like the accident that I have the um, possibility to work with a real musician and. Uh, from conservatorium. And I tried to make uh, the project, the idea was to produce uh, scores in real time and to translate it to uh, screens uh, to every musician. And uh, uh, I thought that musician will play from the, from the screen all these notes which will generate and uh, the composer in real time could control uh, all these notes which uh, will produce. Uh, so the project is called. So I made uh, several patches and uh, Technically, it was very simple. I use LFO, it's low frequency oscillators, which cross the lines. And each time when the LFO cross the line, uh, the note will produce. But you have many options which you can control. How many notes will produce at a time, uh, with uh, durations and uh, many things but actually the result uh, wasn't so um, interested for me because it's it was very hard to control uh, I will try to find a little video from this idea I even didn't uh, didn't make some normal video because I think it's not so worth to do um, 
So for example, Was like like this. Uh, uh, no, uh, so about ex uh, about exper experimental. Uh, all what I uh, made it was really experiment, and um, some, in general, I think that experiment gives freedom, uh, but. Uh, at the same time, it's uh, it's also like excuse. Uh, I mean, whatever you do, and no matter uh, how bad the result may be, you can always justify yourself by experiment. So <laughs> this project, I think, was really experimental for me, and uh, I, I still think it's really bad. But it's good, it, interesting idea, and it could be much better. Uh, but so. But uh, yeah, but uh, the experiment uh, not as an end of itself, but as a part of complex conceptual process seems to me more attractive. It's the like the question of a random. Uh, you know, I, I remember sometimes I have uh, this discussion about that random. Uh, numbers it's not uh, it's not interesting uh, and it's bad to use it in com in composition but uh, uh, for me uh, random it's you know it's uh, if it's part of some complex algorithm it's very interesting and it's absolutely okay uh, so uh, now about news, noise, uh, like many others, I went through the study of the noise musical direction. Uh, I played noise music and I listened to noise music. I like Japanese noise. It's very radical and harsh sound. And I treat this experiment only in the context of radical life position, political uh, position as well. Uh, for example, but it's not noise music, but like person which uh, very uh, powerful position. Uh, I could say Muslim girls. It's a good example of such political position. Um, but here I have a question about uh, the relationship between off, author, author, and uh, listener. Uh, I think it's a very complex question and. Uh, uh, it leads to very long analysis. So, uh, but once again, I, uh, uh, all my way of, like a musician, it's the way of uh, electronic music, finally, sound design electronic music. So, uh, the end of 90s, I think, of the 20th century, and the beginning of 2000s uh, were marked for me by a sharp jump of the performance of, com uh, of computer power, which led to the development of software products and an almost complete uh, transition for, to the computer, to the digital area. Uh, but digital area in the same time uh, as it always happens uh, collapsed from a sharp hype uh, to modular synthesizers, which in fact would be a step back uh, in history, if not for the fact that half of these uh, models uh, have digital st uh, stuff inside, nevertheless. Uh, uh, as uh, electronic musician, of course, I, we have in our world of electronic music, algorithmic electronic music, we have such like uh, great names, uh, remarkable 
uh, music, for example, Otaker and this band from England, they showed how electronic music can uh, sound uh, to be based on algorithms and complex calculations, but has the dance uh, roots of the British underground. In my opinion, I belong to the generation of industrial algorithmic music. I mean the following process. At one time, composers uh, formed a vision of how a computer can help in composition. Uh, sound synthesis and something like that. Uh, and the industry developed and uh, companies created more and more universal and complex algorithms for, uh, in the devices to help the uh, musician. Uh, like hardware, uh, synthesizers or some machines and software products too. Uh, but then a new generation of musician uh, band and every time I, uh, I think that I'm uh, wait, sorry I think that I'm mm, like fourth generation of electronic musician. Uh, so uh, my uh, what I think that um, in some point uh, technical possibilities becomes uh, so complex and at the same time simplified for creating the music that the newly arrived musicians become involuntary hostages of ready-made solutions. Uh, so it means that. Uh, when you open the program, you need to, something new program. You have a lot of possibilities, amazing uh, possibilities in algorithm for algorithmic music. But uh, you know, all these devices are really simplify the process. So uh, actually, with one button, you can make very some difficult process, uh, for example, generating Euclidean rhythms, and here you have FM synthesizer, wavetable synthesizer, gran uh, granularity, and uh, right up to machine learning, neural networks, or something like this. When the composers function almost ex exhausted, like this. Uh, at such moment, in my opinion, there is a shift from the after side to perception. Now the perception of, pre, uh, of creativity can somehow guide the creation. Now you will not no longer be surprised by new technologies and new synthesis algorithms because algorithms won and immediately lost uh, when they become the part of industry. Uh, we went to the mental level, uh, something like meta level. Uh, it's like dedicated to Stanislav Lem, the square filled with perfect mosaics and the car stopped. Uh, what I could say else? Uh, ah, and one thing, I remember how somebody maybe Otaker or Affix Twin said uh, that uh, they did not see the point to create uh, in creating new instruments after the, the invention of granular synthesizers. Somehow like this. It's ridiculous. Uh, maybe uh, I will show you some project which I made. Uh, wait a minute. What, uh, for example, uh, last project uh, which I I work now, it, it was yesterday um, for Opera. I will share the screen. Uh, sorry, I start not with the beginning. Uh, here's the part with we will see what is playing. Uh, 
So that's just some kind uh, for fun. <laughs> I think that's it. That's what uh, I can say anything. No. Ava? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, uh, just one lecture, one one uh, or two presentation it's enough for uh, for have uh, a, uh, for, for have some idea about the role of algorithm uh, it's clear that uh, it's very contrast uh, contrast uh, method uh, and the method of work but uh, for, for me uh, it's, uh, it's more more important that this is position artistic position of uh, uh, composer Lenin Grabowski and the uh, artistic position of sound artist uh, Georgi Potapalski about uh, artistic sense um, of uh, mathematics things, artistic um, power and uh, artistic uh, uh, possibility to, to make um, this absolutely new and open, open space. And uh, we hope that um, the cycle of lecture, the cycle of uh, uh, cycle of mass master class, uh, uh, can um, prepare some soundscape or landscape of different uh, different rules, different way for use. For example, our uh, web uh, platform, uh, pandemic media space, with uh, data and. Uh, all this chiffre, all this um, schema, all this uh, image, very different lines, can uh, can to be um, some uh, uh, some uh, metaphoric uh, material or construct or uh, models for uh, for our work with uh, new. Uh, new possibility, mathematics, uh, dates uh, of uh, change uh, of uh, ecology, change of uh, uh, weather um, in the during of uh, pandemic uh, pandemic situation uh, of our clients. So I I thank you very much for uh, Lenin Drabowski. Thank you very much for Georgi. Thank you very much for all participants. And uh, of course, uh, perhaps uh, questions questions to Georgi, please, please your questions. If you can ask Georgi something. 